Hello everyone, Dr. Kofi here and welcome to Tutor Med where everything medicine is simplified. Sometimes a candidate may be put on a spot with this question, what kind of mema is heard during aortic regurgitation? And the candidate may find it very difficult to bring the answer out quickly. There is a mnemonic for remembering cardiac members and that is what we want to discuss in this video and so kindly grab your notepads and let's get started good so the first thing to know is the anatomical location of the valves by that what i mean is which valves are on the left and which valves are on the right and then the functional location of the valves what i mean is which valves are between the atrium and the ventricles and then which valves are in the outflow tracts which are the aorta and the pulmonary artery and so on this diagram you will see that the left sided valves i'm beginning with the anatomical location the left sided valves are the mitral valve here and the aortic valve then the right sided valves are the tricuspid valve here and the pulmonic valve now when it comes to the functional location of the valves, you would see, or many of us may be aware of the fact that the mitral valve and the tricuspid valves are called atrioventricular valves. It means they move or they control the flow of blood from the atrium to the ventricles in that direction. Then the aortic valve and the pulmonic valves are the outflow tract valves it means they keep blood moving in one direction in those big arteries and so anatomically the left-sided valves are the mitral valve and the aortic valve the right-sided valves are the tricuspid valve and the pulmonic valve then functionally the atrioventricular valves are the mitral valve and the tricuspid valve then the outflow tract valves are the aortic valve and the pulmonic valve very good and so having understood this then the next thing to know is, is that sorry memes can occur either during systole or diastole meaning we can have systolic memes and diastolic memes then after establishing this we see that the valves the four valves we've mentioned can have two basic problems which are either regurgitation or stenosis. Another term for regurgitation is incompetence and so we can have mitral valve stenosis, mitral valve regurgitation, tricuspid stenosis, tricuspid regurgitation, aortic stenosis, aortic regurgitation and so on. And so with these few principles in mind, we are set for the mnemonic. Now to our mnemonic. Before we look at our mnemonic, please do not forget to like and share the video, subscribe to our channel if you have not done that yet, and leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Now, the mnemonic we are using is D arms. Yes, that is all the mnemonic, D arms. And from this mnemonic, we can generate the members of the major valvular heart diseases. So the mnemonic is D arms. There is another one we'll use to determine the timing of the memma. But for now, D arms. Now, D stands for diastole. AR stands for aortic regurgitation. And then MS stands for mitral stenosis, meaning the diastolic memes are aortic regurgitation and mitral stenosis. And then these memes are on the left, right? because they are the left-sided valves. Remember that whatever happens on the left is equivalent to the right. And so the equivalent of aortic regurgitation on the right would be pulmonic regurgitation and the equivalent of mitral stenosis on the right would be tricuspid stenosis, meaning the four diastolic members are aortic regurgitation and mitral stenosis on the left and pulmonic regurgitation and tricuspid stenosis on the right. You get the flow right very good now the acronym pair or the mnemonic pair p 
E A R can be used to tell which of the four are early diastolic members and which of them are mid diastolic. And so the E in the word pair means it's early. Then we have P and A R. P stands for pulmonic, A R stands for aortic regurgitation. It means that of the four, the pulmonic and aortic regurgitation members are early diastolic members while the mitral stenosis and tricuspid stenosis are mid-diastolic members. Then, we move to the systolic members. So, S. Now, think about it. If aortic regurgitation is in diastole, then it makes sense that aortic stenosis should be in systole. And if mitral stenosis is in diastole, then mitral regurgitation should be in systole. And so, from this, the systolic members are aortic stenosis, and then mitral regurgitation. Remember, these are left-sided members. So anything that occurs on the left is equivalent to the right. And so we can have on the right, the equivalent of aortic stenosis would be pulmonic stenosis, and the equivalent of mitral regurgitation would be tricuspid regurgitation. And so the four systolic members are aortic stenosis, mitral regurgitation on the left, then pulmonic stenosis, and then pulmonic regurgitation on the right. Now for the timing, please keep in mind that mitral regurgitation and tricuspid regurgitation are pan-systolic or holosystolic member. The word pan or the prefix pan means throughout. So these members occur throughout the systolic phase. So they are pan-systolic members. Then aortic stenosis and pulmonic stenosis are ejection systolic members. They occur at the point of ejecting the blood through the major arteries. Now, still on this slide, I want to give another information that during which phase of breathing do these members get louder? Is it during inspiration or expiration? So the mnemonic is right and then left. So right, you can see RI. What that means is that right-sided members are accentuated or are made louder during inspiration, RI. Then the left, you see LE. And so left-sided members like aortic stenosis and then mitral stenosis are also made louder during expiration and so ri right sided members are made louder during inspiration and then le left sided members are made louder during expiration so that is the information i wanted to add and so on this slide let's look at the various auscultation points on the chest because they can help us differentiate among the various types of members and so the first one I want to talk about is the mitral area. The mitral area is the fifth intercostal space on the left in the mid-clavicular line, which I'll label M. Then from there, we will move to the tricuspid area. The tricuspid area is in the fourth intercostal space, parasternal or closer to the sternum on the left. Then we have the pulmonic area which is the second intercostal space on the left closer to the sternum and so the second parasternal intercostal space then we have the aortic area we have the aortic area which is on the right the second parasternal right intercostal space and so if you have a pansystolic member remember a pansystolic member can be a mitral valve regurgitation or tricuspid regurgitation as far as valvular heart diseases are concerned and so how can you tell if it is from mitral valve regurgitation or tricuspid valve regurgitation you'll see that the mema is heard best at the mitral area and so the pas the pansystolic mema is loudest at the mitral area it suggests more mitral than tricuspid and again that pansystolic mema is accentuated by um, by expiration. Remember, we said that left-sided members are made louder when we expire deeply, we exhale deeply. And one other thing is that 
that member of mitral valve regurgitation radiates into the left axilla. Then when it comes to tricuspid valve regurgitation, you will still hear a pansystolic member, but it is loudest at the tricuspid area. And again, inspiration, deep inspiration would accentuate that memma. Then let's take the pulmonic and aortic. So let's say you have a pulmonic or aortic stenosis. How would you differentiate between the two? Remember that aortic stenosis and pulmonic stenosis would give you an ejection systolic memma. But how can you differentiate between the two? So in aortic stenosis, Remember that the memma is loudest at the aortic area, which is the second intercostal space on the right parasternal. And again, the aorta is on the left. It means that it is a left-sided memma. And so it is accentuated or loudest during deep expiration. And one other thing is that the, the memma of aortic stenosis would radiate into the neck because that is where the carotid artery also comes from. Then the member of pulmonic stenosis would also be a, an ejection systolic member, but it is accentuated during deep inspiration. Why? Because it is a right-sided member. It's on the right side. And so, this is the mnemonic I wanted to share with you. D arms, and then from D arms, you can generate all the various side, uh, kinds of members. So thank you for watching this episode of Tutor Med. Kindly support the channel by liking, sharing, and then subscribing to our channel. See you in our next video. Bye.